Good job, guys. I love it when they break out and do the verses individually like that. Don't they do a good job? A line in that song says, let us become more aware of your presence. This year, our theme has been finished, and you know what we've been noticing is a lot more people are noticing the Holy Spirit speaking to them. They're, they're actually hearing, and, and some, for some, that's easy because you hear it all the time, right? But for others, it's not. So just this week, some of the reports we've got, God, we need a financial miracle, and he gave one. And, and the Holy Spirit guided and gave that financial miracle. For another one, and, and, and I wish I could have them all share. We don't have time today. We're not going to take all your time. But for another one, it was which contractor to use. And they chose a contractor. And the Holy Spirit said, don't use that one. And they had already called that one. When they called and canceled, actually found out the guy was going to charge them a lot more than, than was expected. And then God sent someone to do that for them for uh, basically no cost other than the advertising of doing it. Amen. Give God praise. Others that were watching God do, uh, and, and I can't go into great detail here because they haven't shared it all yet, but let me throw one out. Someone is needing a job change. And it's, we're not talking about a daily. We're not talking about one of those jobs, you know, that, and, and praise God if you have a job, praise God. But we're talking about someone with a career that needs a career change. And they're driving by, and it's like the Holy Spirit says, go in here. Now, if you know anything about career changes, it doesn't happen that way. But two weeks later, they turned in their notice where they had been forever, and now they're seeing God move them in a new direction. Listen for the voice of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Hear what He says to you. Trust Him, follow Him, and watch what He will do in your life. Give Him praise in the house. <laughs> so it's been a good...
Amen. You can be seated. So here we go. We're talking about the love of God today. The love of God. And here's what it says. If you have the means to help folks and you don't, then you're not showing the love of God. But let me take that a step further. That doesn't mean if you've worked hard all your life and you've developed a, a wealth of, and that you're supposed to give it to those that won't make any effort. That is not socialism in the kingdom of God is not what we're talking about. But what we are talking about is loving in more than name. Loving in more than name. We're talking about how God loves us. And so what he started with here, he literally said that this is how he loved us, that he gave his life for a spouse. Don't raise your hands. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because we're going to get in a lot of trouble right there. Terry, you already in trouble because she looks straight at you. But she didn't raise her hand. She looks straight at you. But just teasing. Love them to death. Oh. Um, but how many would give your life for the one that hurt you? For the one that damaged you? For the one that, that's destroying your children? Because Christ gave his life for those that, that literally were the ones that were crucifying on Calvary. And so he tells us here, and, he, and, he, and I love the way he says it. He says, check your heart to see if you love others. I'm paraphrasing, but he says, check your heart. Because God knows more than your own heart, but check your heart. You ever say something, and you know good and well the Holy Spirit back there going, don't say that, don't, say, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. And you say it, because you're going to get your two cents worth in, right? And you know you shouldn't have said it. And damage is done, and pain is there, and hurt. And then you regret it later, because let's be honest, if I ask Terry for his thoughts, I'm going to say a penny for your thoughts, but I'm going to give you my two cents worth. What I want to say to you is more valuable than what I want to hear from. That's not love. So what is the definition of love? 1 Corinthians 13 tells us the definition of love. It says, love is patient, love is kind. We're all patient with our spouses, right? And with our kids, right? Thomas, you patient all the time, right? <laughs> Sean, you patient all the time, right? Love is patient, love is kind. Here's one. Love holds no record of wrong. Love holds no record of wrong. So you know what my favorite line is in my house? When these kids start paying the electric bill, they can leave every line on. But every single day they, wait a minute, that's not, that's holding a record. It's true, every single day they go through that. It's like they wake up and they go, watch this, click, 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 let me turn the water on, woo -hoo! And I'm like, I'm trying to love them, but I'm the one paying the bill. You good. You good. You good. See, now I'm going to have to repent. <laughs> Love. 1 John chapter 4. Flip over one. 1 John chapter 4. You don't have to stand. I'm going to read from verse 4 to the end of the chapter. This is the love book anyway. So we're going to talk about love a little bit more here. Verse 4 says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us, he that is not of God heareth us not, or not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. That's about the third time in a few verses we've taught, said, love your neighbor. And I lost my place. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifest the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be appropriation for our sins. I pronounce that wrong every time. It's okay. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. If God loves you, you're supposed to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that when we dwell in him and he in us, because he has given us his spirit, 
And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath for us. God is love. Catch this. God is love. God did not send us to be the ball bat of the world so that we can knock out everyone that doesn't see it the way we do. Because God forbid we might be wrong in something and there might be someone with a bigger bat looking for us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. So as God loves, we're loved too, right? Everything we do is love, right? Not. I'm talking about me, not you. You guys are flawless, but... There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear, because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. If a man says, I love God and I hate my neighbor, Jesus said, everybody out there is your brother and your sister, right? If I hate him, then I don't love God. I'm not, I'm just reading it out of the book. If I love God and hate his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment have we from him. And this what? Commandment. Commandment have we from him that he who loves God loves his brother also. You ever just not like some scripture? I, Savannah, I don't love everybody the way I should. I'm going to be honest. I love them. I want them to go to heaven. I hope their soul makes it. But, but let me ask you, is anybody else honest in the room other than me? Have you ever loved somebody's soul and hope it went to heaven, but the quicker it got there, the better you'd be? <laughs> Right? So you admit it. Danny, thank you. There's one other honest person in the room. I had a Sunday school teacher when I was this big. He said, I love my mother-in-law and I hope her soul goes to heaven, but I hope her body rots right here on earth. I'm like, wow. He said, she sends me a Christmas card. I throw it away. I said, what if there's money in it? He said, I don't want her blood money. I'm like, dude, relax. Take the money, right? I mean, I don't know. Scripture tells us we have to love each other. Not everybody's easy to love. Can I get an amen? amen? Some folks are real hard to love. Some folks, I told them first service, my neighbor's not easy to love today. Because half the night, her big dogs are going, oh, 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 oh. And I didn't realize that city living means the dogs are real close to your window. I'm thinking, in the, to save her so she can rest, I'm going to go out there and knock her dogs out. Just kidding. Just kidding. I wouldn't do that. I got dogs too. Let me sum up this scripture for you. In my summation. Friends were commanded to love our neighbor throughout scripture. Yet, we have free will. We're commanded to show the world the love of God commanded to test the spirits in John chapter, or 1 John chapter 4, the first few verses, we didn't read it, but we're commanded to test the spirits, even to see if they are of God, and here is the test. Do you love your neighbor? Now that's testing the spirits in you. Because it's real easy to test everybody else's spirits, right? It's real easy for me to call coach out. It's real easy for me to call everybody else out. Rick, oh I know. I know. He's like, oh, no, don't, don't say it. But it's easy to find everyone else because you know what? That 
can't be a spirit of God breathing in them. What, when do I test my own spirit? Here's the test. Do you love God? Do you love your neighbor? Do you love your neighbor? He says, do in word and deed what you would do in your voice. So let me ask you some questions and then we'll take the test. Do your word and deeds prove love for those around you? Do your words and deeds prove love for the gay and lesbian community? See, I can love them without loving the sin. Or I can curse them all because they're in sin and thank God that he brought me out of my sin, but curse them while they're in their sin. There's no love in that. Do my words and deeds prove that I love my brother who is in the sin of adultery, who is in the sin of homosexuality, who is in the sin of whatever? Do my words and deeds prove my love for them? As a pastor, if I get up here and I bash Democrats every week, if they ever walk through that door, they're going to turn around and walk out and I'll never share Christ with them because they want nothing to do with me because I've never shown them love. All I've shown them is hate. If all I do is bash Republicans and Trump, you know Christians got mad because someone prayed for Trump? He walked into church and asked for prayer. Oh, well, we can pray for every other person on planet Earth, but not that guy. Isn't that the best place for someone that needs prayer to walk in a church door? Wouldn't it be wonderful if everybody in the church loved them? See, here's what he said. It's hard to love God if you hate people. And believe me, sometimes I don't like people. But it's my job to love them anyway. I don't like their sin, but my job to love them. In fact, it's a commandment from God for me to love them. What are your deeds doing? Do you love your pastor? Or will you grill him for lunch? Because Miss Kathy has already fired up the barbecue today. Actually, for the last few weeks, you've been upset with me, but that's okay. Do you love your teachers? What about your neighbors? In Corinthians, here's what it says. This is the day of Pentecost, right? It says that we are to seek the gifts, tongue talking, prophesying, Holy Ghost anointing. We're to seek those gifts. And then he stops and says, but I'll show you something better than all that. Love. Seek the gift of prophecy. Seek tongues and interpretation. Seek healing. Seek the miracles. Seek those things. Yet I will show you something that has more power than all of them. 1 Corinthians 12. Read the last two verses. Yet I will show you a better way. Love. Love. He says, if I am a... If I speak with tongues of men and angels and have not love... I'm useless. Paraphrasing. <laughs> you can keep quoting it, can't you? The truth. Here's the truth. So last week, and we're ready for the test. I'm going to get you out of here soon. Next two hours. <laughs> last week we talked about the breastplate of righteousness. And we usually see that as a battle armor, right? But last week we looked at it as the high priest's breastplate. And here's what it said. That when the priest, you, born again children of God with royal blood running through your veins, that when you go into the Holy of Holies, he carried the twelve stones or the twelve tribes of Israel on his heart. It didn't say on the breastplate, it said on the heart. It said he carried everyone around him to the throne of God on his heart. Burdened for them. You remember that Israel was divided into two kingdoms? So those 12 stones mean that most of them were fighting.
And yet he said, we are to carry those around us to the throne of God on our heart. <coughs> so here's your test. I'm going to clarify this. This is a volunteer organization. You didn't have to come today. You chose to come. You're stuck with me because you work here. But, but you're still a volunteer. Somebody should give her a donation. We never pay her. I'll give her a donation. She takes cash, credit cards, Kohl's cards, whatever, right? She's good. Starbucks. You don't need any more caffeine out of So you're all here by volunteer. People say, well, why don't you make people work at the church? Are you serious? Well, for service, much less for a work day, right? That's not true for you. You'll hang sheet rock till Jesus comes, won't you? That was rough. Terry helped rebuild a church in Springfield with him. We got there, there was 128 sheets of 12 foot, 5 8 inch thick, 12 foot sheet rock. We did it. There's others too, thank you. Kurt was in on that, wasn't you? Oh, yeah. Uh -oh. See that? The old guys show up. Anyway, going on. <laughs> so you don't have to take this test. But if you don't, it might tell the condition of your heart, which we read in the first few verses, right? So you're trying to make me feel guilty? Nope. Here's the test. There are people that I pray for. I send out at least three to five prayers every day every morning between 6 and 8 a.m. to people. Tell them I'm praying for them. You get some of those prayer requests some days? I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do as a test. I'm going to ask you to look around this room and find someone that you don't talk to, even visitors, someone that you do not talk to on a regular basis. And you're going to walk up to them and say, what can I pray for you for? If they want to share a bunch, that's okay. If they just want to say, hey, pray for my liver. But here's what I'm asking you to do, and here's the test. You, we will not get a great sheet next week. No one will know what you scored. But here's the question. Can I walk up to someone that I don't know very well? Look them in the face and say, what can I pray for you about? Pray for this. Can I trust them to take me to the throne of God? Can they trust me to love them even though it's not my best friend? Can they trust me to love them unconditionally and take them to the throne of God and literally for the next week, every single day, travail on behalf of them? Because next Sunday... Without me saying a word to you, you'll know whether or not you love people. If all I can do for you, Tasha, is throw up a helper, Lord, and I can't, and you bring me a specific need. If I can't travail for your need as if it was mine, you tell me you got cancer, I ought to pretend that it's my cancer. I ought to pray fervently. You tell me you're struggling with homosexuality, I ought to pray with everything in me for you to be delivered. That's not taking it to social media. That's not taking it to the neighbor. That's taking it to the throne of God. So the test would be, I think my battery just died. It's okay. It'll be all right. Yeah, we got it. Can you hear me? The test would be this. Are you willing to get up, walk over to someone and say, what can I pray for you about? Then are you willing to actually trust them with that prayer? Great detail or one line? Because here's what God said. Until I can love everyone in the room equally, I can't love God fully. Me and Coach have spent a lot of hours together. A lot of hours in the woods together. Me and Kurt in the garage. And I love those two men. But if I can't love the rest of you the same, how can I love God whom I've not seen when I can't earnestly pray for you who's sitting beside me? This is the test. So before we take communion, which is covenant, right? I'm going to ask you to look around. Find somebody, even if somebody else is with them, find 
somebody and share your prayer request with them. And then whoever shared it with you, share one with them. And then take it to the throne of God as if it was your very own. This proves your love for God. Not to me, but to your own heart. That's what it says, right? Find somebody to pray for. Hop up, find somebody. Somebody you don't normally let find your spouse.
And just so you know, I know the world says that uh, once an addict, always an addict, but I, I'm recreated by the blood of Christ, and I am no longer an addict. Thank yes. you very much. Amen. Woo! Yeah. I was set free. And I believe if God's people start showing love one for another, genuinely, then lives will change. I pray for you with everything in me. I pray for you with everything in me. God put you on my heart. Anyway, we're not going there in front of everybody, but just know this. I carry you to the throne of God. When you get a text that says, I'm praying for you, I've been praying for you. Because everyone in this room has struggles. And everyone needs God to move on their behalf. And every one of us need a two or more gathered in his name on our behalf. Now I'm going to give you about two minutes for those of you that did what me and Miss Kathy did. So here's what me and Miss Kathy did. When I brought this up first service, we started thinking about the people that had hurt us, the ones that had damaged us, the ones that had destroyed us. And the first thought is, how can I love them? So before we take communion, I want you just to let that go, even if it's just for a few minutes. Just say, God, forgive me for hating them. Forgive them for hurting me. If there's anything in me, Lord, that's not right with you, before I remember what you did for me through the taking of the, the juice and the cracker, I want you to make sure that I'm in tune with you. For the next few minutes, just take time and talk to the Lord on your own behalf. couldn't be in this church worshiping on this Pentecostal Sunday morning if it wasn't for the blood of your son. And while I don't fully comprehend love the way that you love me, I'm learning and growing. And I ask you to cleanse me of anything that's not righteous before you. Forgive me of bad thoughts and attitudes. Help me to love the way you love. And never let me forget that while they were nailing him to the tree, he said, Father, forgive them. I'm asking you to let me, as the leader of this church, have an attitude of forgiveness in all things the way Jesus did. And let it lead out into this congregation that we can love unconditionally the way you do. Your precious name. <coughs> Stan, if you and Mark will come. Kurt, if you and Sterling will come. We ask that everyone of you guys go down this side. Stan, you go with him. You guys go down this side. I ask you not to partake till we do that together. Can you four gentlemen come back to the front once you passed out the communion? Scripture says, as often as we do this, do this to remember what Christ did for us. Never forget what Christ did for you.
stand up here with me? Will you stand and bless the bread and then we'll partake of the bread? After they had blessed it, they took the bread and ate. Miss Uli, will you bless the cup? Will you do that? 